With the introduction of the new Humminbird Explorer units, newer devices like the five-port Ethernet switch, ASETH5PGL, there's bound to be questions regarding how to set up a one-boat network. Will the older Ethernet switch, ASETH5PXG, work with the Explorer units? Is the power cable the same for the 5PXG and the 5PGL? Can you mix the old and the new 5-port Ethernet switches? If I want to replace an existing 5PXG with a new 5PGL, will it be a difficult job? Do I even need to add a 5-port Ethernet switch? Are there advantages to using the 5PGL? versus the older 5PXG. What do these lights mean? Do I have a problem because some of them are flashing? Keep watching for answers to all of these questions and more. On a quick side note, I have been getting subscriber requests to do Explore videos similar to my Helix ones, as well as Mega Live 2 videos. These videos will happen once winter passes and the new Explore and Mega Live 2 product arrives. Before we do an in-depth exploration of Ethernet switches, let's make sure that we actually need one. Experienced users will quickly recognize that this is a silly setup and that when you have a single unit, you do not need an Ethernet switch. Let's clarify whether or not you need a 5-port Ethernet switch. You do not need an Ethernet switch if you are simply trying to connect two networkable units to share waypoints. The most basic network is sharing waypoints between two units. In this case here, I have a Humminbird Helix. The blue indicator is showing the Ethernet port. You will notice that the Ethernet cable, which is not included with the switch, this will not plug into that. Therefore, you need this ASEC QDE adapter cable, which is not also known as an Ethernet dongle. The dongle is not required for Apex, Solix, and Explore units. You can see the Ethernet dongle attached into the top Helix unit and it is joined together with the ethernet cable and going through the ethernet cable and adding a dongle to connect this to this will complete the network and allow these two units to share waypoints. Ethernet cables are sold separately from the ethernet switches and they come in lengths of 5, 10, 15, 20, and 30 feet. For example, I use 15 foot cables to go from the console to the bow of the boat, and I would only use five foot cables to go from the day box to the console. Helix, Solix, and Explore units only have one ethernet port. Therefore, once you have connected two units, the system is closed and that's where you need the ethernet switch because now you will be able to add devices to the network. The Apex series is the only Humminbird unit that has two ethernet ports. When you have three or more devices connected to a network, you will need to get a five port ethernet switch. Your trolling motor is another example of an ethernet connection device. And you can see here that there is that silver connection. And this is the Minn Kota Ultrax Quest. The 5PXG is limited to four Humminbird units connected. And the advantage of the 5PGL is that you can connect five Humminbird units. If you are using older networkable Humminbird units, you will likely have to use the 5PXG. If you have a Helix G2N or older networkable Humminbird unit, you will have to use the ASETH5PXG Ethernet switch. Although I've had these two ASETH5PGL Ethernet switches, I did not put them on my boat last year. Let me explain why the 5PXG 
Ethernet switches are still in my boat at this time. My current setup at the console has a G4N Helix side imaging unit. And over here, I have a G2N Chirp GPS, which I use when I'm driving. I would need to eliminate the G2N from my one boat network in order to be able to use two 5PGL switches, since the PGL switches are not compatible with the G2N. Two units at the console plus three front units surpasses the limit of four Humminbird units on the old 5PXG Ethernet switch. This top unit is dedicated to the Mega Live. I do not have it networked into the system to bypass that issue. And I have it linked right into the front fuse panel and the ethernet connection going directly into the back of this unit. Humminbird recommends the purchase of the 5PGL as opposed to the 5PXG. The indicator lights are definitely going to be a huge improvement moving forward. Make sure your units are up to date so that you will be able to use the five PGL Ethernet switches. The five PXG has no indicator lights at the top and the PGL has the five plus the power LED indicator lights. The 5PGL has faster connection speeds than the 5PXG. A driving force behind the creation of the 5PGL was the demand for the ability to network five Humminbird units. Here's what you need to do to link five Humminbird control heads plus another Ethernet Two device. Five PGL Ethernet switches daisy chained together like this will enable you to run five Humminbird control head units. Since there's eight available ports, you would be able to add three other Humminbird or Minn Kota Ethernet devices. Another advantage of the 5PGL is that it was $30 American cheaper than the purchase price of the 5PXG when I made this video. I checked a leading Canadian dealer and the PGL is $20 cheaper than the 5PXG. The 5PXG was a special order item and they had four of the PGLs in stock. So the newer one will be also easier to get. If you have Helix G3N, G4N, Apex, Solex, or Explore units, then you can use the ASETH 5PGL Ethernet switch. The 5PXG switch still works with all networkable Humminbird units. As I am unboxing the ASETH 5PGL, you will notice that it looks very similar to the 5PXG 5 port Ethernet switch. The 5PGL is easily identifiable with the Humminbird logo. And you'll notice the bottom is very similar to the 5PXG. The top is different as you have five indicator lights and also an indicator light for the power connection. Included in the box is the Ethernet switch installation guide, some cable notices. You have a power cable and you have two screws to mount the Ethernet switch. The footprint is identical. The 5PGL is sitting on top of a 5PXG and the holes line up perfectly. So the installation of the 5PGL will be super simple. From this angle, you can see the 5PXG on the bottom and the 5PGL on top. Here's another look to see just how well matched the units are with the 5PXG and the 5PGL making replacement super easy. Both switches have waterproof housing, but try to avoid putting them in splash prone areas. The end of the ethernet cable plugs directly into the ethernet switch. If you have helix units going into an ethernet switch, then you do need the dongle to go into the Helix unit. So this piece here will go into the 
cable connector or directly into the back of the helix and this end will go to the ethernet switch. I did leave room down at the bottom to add a third ethernet switch if necessary. Please note that with the five PXGs, you can only daisy chain a maximum of three five port ethernet switches together. You can build a larger one boat network with the five PGLs daisy chaining five switches and up to 20 devices. My switches are mounted in my day box here on this Ranger Z520C. The five port switches can be mounted on any level surface, vertically, horizontally, upside down, it doesn't matter. Make sure you leave a little slack in your cables when you're mounting them. Cap off any unused ports to avoid corrosion. The ethernet switches, you can see the power here and the power to the switch. They draw power, so make sure you have the ability to switch them off. The 5 PGL requires a 1 amp fuse. The 5 PXG requires a 3 amp fuse, which obviously doesn't go here, but just so you know, there is a difference between the fuse requirements. Here you can see the two 3 amp fuses for the two PXG switches. And once again, remember that it is important to turn them off. So the fuse panel is connected to a switch at the back of the boat so that the power can be disconnected. When switching to the PGL Ethernet switch, those two purple fuses will be changed to one amp fuses and I can use the same power cord. It is a PCES power cable Ethernet switch and it works for both switches, the PGL and the PGX. My fuse panel is connected to this on off switch which cuts power to the fuse panel and ethernet switches. You can mix 5 PGL and 5 PXG ethernet switches together but all Hummingbird control heads must be compatible with the 5 PGL in order for the Ethernet switches to work together. When mixed together, the 5PXG is the limiting factor. So you would not be able to use five Humminbird control head units because one of these switches is the PXG. I removed the power cable from the 5PXG and I simply plugged it into the power on the 5PGL and you can see the indicator light is on and therefore you know that the power is connected and the activity or indicator lights are going to be a huge advantage of the 5PGL over the 5PXG especially when it comes to troubleshooting. Using the pre-existing hole and all is a helpful tool when you are mounting the new PGL. If you want to switch out a 5PXG for the 5PGL, it is a super easy process. All you have to do is remove the screws and you can mount the PGL into the pre-existing location. You can use the pre-existing power cord. The ethernet cables are all the same. So it is basically just a very simple switch. When switching from the 5PXG to the 5PGL, remember to take out the 3 amp fuse and replace it with a 1 amp fuse for the 5PGL. I just put the PGL into the old 5PXG location. Over here is the power. And if you look up here, the power is represented with the on amber indicator light. Next to it, a number five slot, I have a jumper cable, which is daisy chaining the two ethernet boxes, the old 5PXG and the 5PGL. 
and the ethernet switches will show a green light. Over here are the two helix units that I have at the console and helix units will show amber lights. Therefore, you know everything is working. The flashing lights are no cause for concern. They're simply showing that data is being transferred between the boxes or the unit. Please be aware the connection strength can alter the LED color. Ports three and four are empty, so there's obviously no lights flashing here. The activity or indicator LED lights are definitely going to help you with troubleshooting as the green or yellow will help identify what's connected, but I still recommend the use of labels on your ethernet cables. You can see here that the ethernet cables are attached into ports one and two, but when you come up and look at the lights, you'll only see one amber light flashing. In this case, the second amber light is not flashing, so it's showing no connection and that means I need to do some troubleshooting. For video purposes, I did not turn on the helix graph that is connected to port number two, and therefore the light's not on. Troubleshooting with the 5PGL is definitely a huge advantage for the PGL versus the 5PXG ethernet switch. Amber lights not only represent a Helix connection, they represent a NMEA 2000 connection, your trolling motor connection, as well as Chirp radar. I just got off the phone with technical support at Humminbird, and surprisingly, the Explore unit is going to be an amber light as well. A green indicator light also represents Apex, Solix, Mega Live, Mega Live Target Lock connections as well. Please let me know if you found this video helpful. As always, a like, share, subscribe is very much appreciated. Take care and bye for now.